a key weekend series in the ACC, a top 15 battle, the Florida State Seminoles and the Clemson Tigers, and we start with a Saturday doubleheader here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Hi, everybody, and welcome in with Ron Smith, Pete Yannity, Eric Bankage, the Clemson coach, may have said it best. This is a heavyweight battle coming up this weekend, and that means you've really got to pay attention to detail on either side. Yeah, two top teams in the country, and in games like these and series like these, it's the teams that execute. Uh, don't walk people, get big two-out hits with runners in scoring position, get successfully get a sacrifice bunt down, get runners in from third base with less than two outs. Now each team has a third baseman who's among the hottest hitters in the country as we speak. Let's start out with Florida State. Cam Smith, a sophomore. He's a guy who you would say is going through an anti-sophomore slump. Well, yeah, for sure, the guy's hitting 476. He's got six home runs, 22 RBI. Uh, he's yeah, well, actually, Florida State has eight of their nine starters hitting over 300. <laughs> so that says it all, and he's among the national leaders with that 476 batting average. Clemson Tigers third baseman Blake Wright off to the best start of his career. The senior had three homers and a win the other night against Presbyterian. That's indicative of the stroke that he's shown this year. Boy, he's been very aggressive. He's been a little more selective here recently. Last seven games, he's hit 552. He's had six home runs, 17 RBI, and he is really producing for the Tigers. Florida State Seminoles, top two in the nation with a 356 team batting average. The unbeaten Florida State Seminoles, we should add. Max Williams, their center fielder, leads it off. There's Smith in the two-hole at third base. James Tibbs been around their program for a while, bats third. Jaime Ferrer, guy who's got some pop in the cleanup spot. Drew Ferro, he's seen the Tigers before in a different uniform. Marco Dingus, Daniel Cantu, McGuire Holbrook, and Alex Lodis round out the starting nine for the Seminoles, guided by Link Jarrett. Well, the Tigers normally would go in a weekend series with Austin Gordon, then Tristan Smith, but you know, doubleheader today, they're changing it up. In fact, Eric Backage saying the kitchen sink is their pitching plan today, so they'll start out game one with sophomore lefty Ethan Darden. And Ethan Darden's a guy that uh, is not super overpowering. He's got a really nice uh, slider and good changeup, and important for him to work out in front of this very potent Florida State offense. Darden, last time out, got an inning of work in in the midweek game at Floor Field against Presbyterian. Did not allow a hit, did allow one unearned run, two walks and a strikeout. So now he gets ready to go against the Florida State Seminoles. And it's a team he faced a season ago, five innings in a start. And he allowed four hits and no runs and picked up the win. Yeah. Pitched very, very well against him, and that may have contributed a little bit to the decision by the Clemson's coaching staff for him to be the starter. As you see, some overcast skies, but significantly better than the weather was for the scheduled first pitch last evening when we had heavy rain throughout Friday afternoon through the evening into the early morning hours today in the upstate of South Carolina. So here we go, the Seminoles, yes, unbeaten on the season at 19-0. First pitch delivered, little chopper left side, right diving stop, but Williams will beat it out. Ferrer second on their team with seven home runs. And he skies it high and deep left center field. Canarella back and a grand slam. And the Florida State Seminoles jump out to the 4 nothing advantage. Always a participant in that. 1-2 pitch. Chopped on the left side. Right. Catcher running. Second one. Throw to first. 5-4-3. And the inning is over. But the damage done. Jaime Ferrer. A grand slam to put Florida State on top. Tigers, though, hoping they can hold the line as they come up. Tigers staying with the lineup they used the other night in Greenville. Cam Canarella leads things off in center field. Alden Mathis, also a lefty batter, hitting second and right. Blake Wright, some kind of hot, comes into the game 11 for his last 21. He's hitting seven straight. Over top, the catcher in the cleanup spot, Tristan Bassetto really coming on in his second season in the program. Will Taylor, Jacob Hinderleiter, Andrew Chufo, Jaron Purify rounding out the starting nine for Eric Backage. Tigers come into the afternoon hitting just below 300 as a team. They've got to face one tough customer, Cam Leiter, sophomore, 
right-hander out of Bayville, New Jersey. You've probably heard of his uncles, Al and Mark, who pitched for a long time in the Major League, and his dad also played baseball professionally. And he's seen the Tigers before in another uniform. He and their second baseman, Faroe, coming over during the offseason from UCF. Yeah. Well, just an absolute prototype for a pitcher's body. 6'5", 220, power arm. Gets it up there in the mid-90s and pretty good slider. Key for him is to throw a couple pitches for strikes. If he can do that, ooh, hard to handle. A season ago, pitching for the Knights based out of Orlando, he got a start against Clemson. Went four and two-thirds innings, allowed seven hits, five earned runs, four strikeouts, and five walks. Well, this season coming into the game, you saw his stat line. Walks were an issue early, but he's cleaned those up. 41 strikeouts in 26 and two-thirds. He debuted in a Seminoles uniform with a 13-strikeout effort against Butler. Cam Canarella, Tigers' leadoff hitter, fouls away the first pitch that he sees. At this rate, he's not going to be able to get anywhere close to that distance. They yeah. try to get into the sixth inning with their very good starting staff. They've been successful for the most part so far. 2-1 on Taylor. Left side, pass Lodis. It'll score one, they'll wave right. Throw to the plate. Out. Really nice throw by Ferrer. Holbrook makes the tag, and that'll do it for the Tigers in the home first. Give Taylor an RBI. Tenderella drove home nine in the three-game series against the Seminoles last year. Center field, back on it, Williams. Toward the hill, reaches up, and it's out of here. It just kept on carrying, and Cam Canarella ties us up at four. Well, it's another off speed pitch away. And he seems to be just battling with these off speed pitches, breaking pitches. I want to climb the ladder with a fastball. Ferrer, who hit the grand slam in the first, waits on deck, swing and a miss. Stayed with that breaking ball, and it was really well located. Second strikeout for Darden, and our track man shows that to be a ball. Payoff pitch, runners will be on the move. Ripped past the shortstop, Lodis. Chufo scores easily. Purified a third. A two-out RBI single for Canarella. Tigers build a lead to 6-4. It was six years ago this April on a Saturday night at Doug Kingsmore Stadium when Florida State picked up a win over Clemson. And for the guy who was known affectionately as number 11, Mike Martin, that triumph made him the winningest coach in NCAA baseball history. Closing in on 2,000 on that night with 1,976. Boy. Well, Mike Martin would retire a few uh, years after that and Mike Martin passed away back on February 1st. Right. Yeah, still very close to the Florida State program. His son, Mike Jr., replaced Mike Martin, and then Link Jarrett returned to his alma mater, who was like a son to Mike Martin yeah. as well. Two years ago, Link Jarrett was instrumental in the memorial service with Mike Martin's wife, Carol, and talked so uh -oh. affectionately about his former head coach. That is driven high and deep to left and gone. Alex Lodis, his fourth home run of the season. First time the Seminoles get on the board since inning number one. The ball will be returned from the grandstand and left. It's a 6-5 game. Tibbs not only walked and scored in the first, but made a huge play when the Tigers were threatening earlier in the game. Running grab in the right center field gap. Hard oh, shot. Diving stop. Hinderleiter to Darden covering to retire the side. Top shelf play. First baseman to pitcher. Darden outpacing Tibbs to the bag. And the Seminoles are done here in the top of the fifth. They strike on the Lodi solo homer, but the Tigers flashing the glove. Hinderleiter to Darden. If baseball had played out as it usually does, should have been the one leading off this inning after closing out the previous half inning oh. with a great play. In our break, Ron, you noted that's why you want to have a good athlete at first, and usually a guy who 
gets to college baseball at some point played shortstop earlier in his career because he was probably the best athlete and maybe had the best arm on his high school team. Unless they're left handed. That's Unless well left handed hit. skied high and deep to right. Hinderleiter knew it off the bat out of here for home run number five and the lead grows to eight five. Well that was appropriate for baseball make the big play in the top half of the inning come up second not first and drive one on a pitch that pretty much right down the middle and he kind of inside outed that fastball and just drove it to right center field good swing that moves away from right and the hill transferred in this season from West Virginia that one might land in the Mountain State Blake Wright clobbers one a three run blast home run number 11 and the lead grows to six runs. Wow. Pete I, I am just not sure how Blake Wright was able to keep that pitch fair. That ball was up and in. It was not in the strike zone and it was coming in on him and he just did an incredible job. Look at him getting his hands inside the ball and dropping that bad head on it and that was a no doubter about about five or six rows up with that wind blowing out. Big swing. Seven hits. Four earned runs. Drive to left. Back on it. Taylor came in. Then he had to head on back. Makes the catch. Now the runner. Cantu had made the turnaround second. And they double him up. Third time of the game. The Tigers turn a double play. This one the more unconventional. 7-6-3. Will Taylor. Near disaster is averted. And the Tigers close out the Seminoles here in the seventh inning with a twin killing. Seventh inning stretch time, 11 5 Clemson. Will Taylor smiling right now for a split second. There may have been some concern for the Tigers' junior outfielder, but he actually may have faked out the base runner, can too. Well, you can see his route was not the most direct route. He is able to make the, the catch. And then two really good throws and Cantu had to retreat and touch second base again and two really good throws one from from Taylor and the other one from Chufo to to double up Cantu at, at first base and but you're right I think he, the, the base run was faked out by Taylor Cantu was at a weird angle on the grounder to first by Cantarella that one's ripped stay fair it does. To the wall it goes. A couple will come home. Second double on the afternoon for Alden Mathis. This time he brings home two runs and the Tigers grow the lead to eight, 13 to five. Obertop will be on the move with a pitch. And a liner to left and Ferrer has to play it on a bounce. In comes Mathis. It's a 14-5 Clemson lead. Over to third goes Obertop. And an RBI single for Nolan Naraki. You got to feel good for him. They were playing Florida State. I'm guessing it was in the NCAA tournament or the College World Series. And that's ripped to left, and that's going to do it. Will Taylor and the Tigers will walk him off. Runner at third was safe. Obertop coming across with what proves to be the winning run in a 15 to 5 run rule victory for the Tigers. Second RBI single in the game for Taylor and Clemson hands Florida State its first loss of this 2024 season 15 to 5. Well Clemson just with an offensive explosion both in the second and in the fifth inning but just and then again here in the seventh and just a great job banging out 14 hits. Florida State contributing a little bit Pete with the six walks and the two errors and and uh, but Clemson really swung the bat well against some top notch pitching. Solid liner to left a couple of RBI's in the game for Taylor give him 11 on the season. It was a good game with a couple of hits a couple of runs scored two walks so the Tigers improve to 20 and two on the year three and one in the ACC the Seminoles fall to 19 and one and three and one 
Second game to follow on a Saturday afternoon at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Where else would you rather be? Top two teams in the nation in RPI. Thought it would be a game where we saw some offensive muscle flex, but for Will Taylor and the Tigers, boy, they had the home run bat and the line drive stroke working. Yeah, that, and for, for me, the, the key was Ethan Darden bouncing back, back after that tough first inning, posting a couple zeros. Then you give it to the outstanding Clemson bullpen. Join us at approximately 4.40 p.m. for game number two. 15 to five, your final score, Tigers. For Ron Smith and our great crew for now, Pete Gannity saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.